Section 4.2 deals with another technique of solving a system of equations. This one is an algebraic technique. And um, before we were solving in section 4.1, we were solving systems of equations uh, graphically, and now we're going to use algebraic techniques. So we're not going to use any graphing in this particular section. So the technique that we're t I'm talking about is something called substitution. And substitution uh, is a very uh, straightforward and very valuable technique on how to solve a system. And this should really say the key is. The key is what we want to do with our system of equations, with our pair of equations, is we want to solve one of the equations for one of the variables. And as you look at these two equations, very conveniently, although this won't always be the case, the second equation is solve for x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what x is equal to, which is x is equal to 3y plus 1, right? And I'm going to plug it in for x. I'm going to rewrite the first equation just like this. So what I've done there is I've substituted x for x, what x is equal to, and x is equal to 3y plus 1. I put that inside parentheses. Now I'm left with an equation with one variable, and it's an easy one, pr pretty easy, something that I, I, I know that I can solve pretty quickly. The first thing I have to do in order is to uh, remove the parentheses. When I move the parentheses, I wind up with this, negative 2 times 3y, negative 2 times positive 1, plus 3y. So I've removed the parentheses. Next thing I'm going to do is combine like terms. Negative 6y plus 3y. Don't be in a hurry. It's one mistake with your signs and its curtains. So you have to be careful. Take your time. So combine like terms. I get negative 3y minus 2 is equal to negative 8. And of course, then I just add 2. And I wind up with negative 3y is equal to, is that negative 6? That's right, be careful. Negative 8 plus 2. And then the last step is divide by negative 3, and I wind up with y is equal to positive 2. So that's the value of y. Now what we need to do is need to find out what x is. So let's find x. And obviously, um, in order to find x, we're going to use the simplest equation, which is the second equation. Oh, isn't that great? Let's and the second equation is x is equal to uh, 3y plus 1. And x is equal to, well, we know that y is 2 from the work we just did. 3 times 2 plus 1. So 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 1. We wind up with y is 7. Okay. So according to this, or the way we solved it, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I didn't mean y, I meant x here. We get x is equal to 7. And we have an ordered pair, x is 7 and y is 2. So we do have a single point xy that is a solution to this system. Let's, the last thing we need to do is we need to check it's very, very important that we do that. Check means take the values of x and y, plug them into both equations. Let me write that out. So I've written out um, each equation, the first equation and the second equation, and I plugged in my answers for x and for y, and then what I've done is I've, I've evaluated the left-hand side of this equation, First doing my multiplications, then doing my additions, watching out for my sign numbers. The first equation checks, and likewise for the second one. I have x equals 3y plus 1, plugged in x is, uh, plugged in, um, x is equal to 7, and y is equal to 2, and that checks. So it looks like I did a really excellent job here in solving that system by substitution. Let's take a look at another example. Now in this second system over here, x plus y equals 8 and 2x minus 3y equals 6, um, neither one of these equations is solve for one, a, a particular variable, one of the variable, variables, but certainly it's much, 
the first equation is easier to solve for x. It just involves, or you could solve for y, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to solve for x, and it's very easy. I just subtract y from both sides, and I wind up with x is equal to 8 minus y. And that's it. So I had one extra step. Now x is equal to 8 minus y, and take that x right there and plug in 8 minus y into it. And this is what I get. And so this is what I get. Uh, and then um, I'm the, I'll need to use my distributive property, and I get 2 times 8 to clear the parentheses. 16 minus 2y minus 3y equals 6. Combine like terms. The y's are combined. Be very careful there. This is 16. Minus 2y minus 3y is minus 5y equals 6. And of course, I'll subtract 16 and divide by negative 5. So I wonder what negative 5y is equal to. 6 take away 16 is negative 10. Boy, there are lots of different places you can make an error with your signs, aren't there? Divide by negative 5, and I wind up with y is equal to 2. Okay. Now what I need to do is I need to find x. And it's really important that you um, go back to one of the original equations. And the easiest, the simplest original equation was the first one. Because at least I know the originals ha don't have any mistakes. If I use the one that I, if I use this equation right here, I might have made a mistake. I know I didn't, but there may be a mistake there. Okay, so um, let's go back to the original, one of the original equations, x plus y equals 8, y is 2, x plus 2 equals 8, and, and x is equal to 6. So we wind up with the solution is, ordered pair, x is 6, y is 2, and if I had, what this means, since there's a single ordered pair, is that the, these two equations, if I had drawn the graphs, okay, they would have intersected at this point. So there would be a unique single point of intersection. And that's how you use uh, substitution as an algebraic technique to solve a system of equations. One thing that I forgot, it left out here, is the check. Make sure that you plug in x is 6 and y is 2 in both of these equations. It's pretty obvious the first equation checks very easily. 6 plus 2 equals 8. And then the second one is 2 times 6, which is 12, minus 3 times 2, which is 6. 12 minus 6 equals 6. Check. Substitution.